Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mashallah. Once again, we welcome you to our podcast. This time we have our uh, very elderly, mashallah, very elderly, but very active uncle of our community, uh, Brother Zahir Akbar. Mashallah. How are you today? Alhamdulillah, I'm good. Mashallah. I'm mashallah. good, thank you. So, especially the youth out there who have been going to the gym or who have been uh, hitting the gym or into uh, fitness etc they might be quite familiar with our uh, brother here mashallah so brother Zahir uh, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and the work you do mashallah yeah yeah I I, um, I founded the Wari Breed Boxing Gym oh, um, we were based in, in uh, on Braffer Road in Dewsbury I um, I put the gym together in 2011. Oh, it's been a while. Okay. It's been, yeah, it's been a long while. I put the gym together. Before then, I was working as a probation officer. Oh, mashallah. But my, my, my passion from however young has been boxing and combat, MMA, well, you name it, we was in it. That type of thing. Yeah. Mashallah. Um, so, Habib, what do you call it? Habib, uh, Alhamdulillah, Habib just come <laughs> around now, you know, yeah. they're, they're, they're absolute great role models for, for our yeah. community. And um, 2011, I set it up. I wanted to join my work because I was working as a probation officer with my passion, which was boxing. Mashallah. And um, just try and engage the community, try and engage the young kids out there, elderly, any, anyone, anyone. Yeah, yeah. My gym was open to oh, anybody, yes. Yeah. So, Masala, so why do you think the main reason behind opening this type of facility? I, I, I think um, over the years, I like I've been kind of having a chat. I've met kids who are, who have now, have, have now are adults and the grandparents. Oh. And I've I've had impact on a lot a lot of kids. Okay. And one of my reason, main reasons why I wanted to open it is, um, I call it Warrior Breed Boxing, and people ask me why why do you call it Warrior Breed? And when I say warrior, I mean somebody with respect, honor, mm. you know, dignity, patience, hard working, mm. um, and all them good attributes which I think yeah. I think we should all strive to have. No, definitely, definitely. Um, <coughs> and over the years, like I say, I've uh, I think we've had a very good impact. Mashallah, mashallah. With, with especially, uh, especially the youth, um, and 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 elderly and people with like issues with health. Yeah, you know, I've I've been involved with helping um, them too. Like the Prophet sallallahu alaihi he mentioned in the hadith that al mu'min al qawi khayru ahabu ila Allah bil al mu'min al daif, wa fi kulli al khayr that uh, a strong believer is better and more beloved to Allah than a weak believer. Mm, Mashallah, mm. it's always good to stay healthy as a you know, believer. It's always good to stay strong. Mashallah, the intention should be, like I tell many of the youth, Mashallah, they, they go to the gym. Mm. Uh, and, uh, or Inshallah, they should at least you know, they're not, not they're not doing anything wrong on the streets. Mm. They're trying to make something good, make something useful. We normally tell people that uh, if you are healthy, the mashallah, you can do more ibadah of Allah. Yeah. Mm. Like, you know, we have two type of people. One is those who Allah has given strength to the youngsters. You know, washabu fi ibadatillah. Those youngsters who you you know spend the youth in the ibadah of Allah. Mm. They. They can't go into ruku, they can't go into sajda, they can't perform as many rakat as they like, but they, they can't be bothered. That's one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the other hand, you have the elderly who want to perform salah, who want to walk to the masjid, who want to go into sajda, but they can't due to the health. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. why you know somebody said it so beautifully that oh youth, you know, value the unable to do this. Yeah, yeah. Without <coughs> doubt, without yeah. doubt. And I think that's one of the big Big, big benefits of of me setting this gym yeah. up. Like I said, I've been in it for a long time and I've seen a lot of good come out of it. And we absolutely encourage, you know, we, we I, I've, I'm no longer in the place in Dewsbury now, but we used to pray, you know, the kids used to pray. We used to close the gym. We used to shut class out and whoever wanted to pray would pray. So we encourage that. I, I absolutely encourage that. So it wasn't just about boxing. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, 
it's not just about going in there and throwing punches. It's, no, boxing, this gym was about healthy living. Yeah. You know, looking after, uh, you know, taking care of your parents, looking after each other. You, you, to be part of my gym. To be active. You, you yeah. not only active, but I, I, I encourage good citizenship, if that, mm. if that makes sense. So if I stay away from trouble, absolutely. Yeah. If I heard ki kids are in, you know, in school or masjid, then uh, I drink, I drink school up. Adam, my, my, you know, the coach who yeah. got partner, he, he kind of runs the place for me. We, we run school, we run masjids, we've gone to people's houses. I get parents ringing me at 10, 11 o'clock out. Oh, today, my son has done this, my son has done that. Can you ever talk to him? Mashallah, one well, thing I've seen with you, Mashallah, we've, we've had you here a few times before, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. with youth, RE nights and, you know, teenage activities and all that. Uh, you are very, very good with the youngsters, Mashallah. The, yeah. the youngsters seem to be relating to you a lot. Mm. Uh, um, can you just tell us how, Mashallah, do you manage that? Um, uh, how do you nurture the youth? You're like a mentor for many of the, our youngsters out there. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. I always say, I sometimes sit down and think this is hard work. <laughs> my hand hurts, my elbow hurts, my shoulder hurts. And I sit down and I really do think, I really do think this. I think I'll, I'm very, very blessed to be in this position. Right. And for somebody to be able to, it's okay me working for myself. Yeah, yeah. Earning loads of money, nice car, nice house, everything. That's brilliant. But Alhamdulillah, I've been in a, put in a place where I can actually make an impact on somebody, somebody else's else life. life. No, no, yeah. that, that, that's a legacy in it. Without a doubt. Because uh, at the end of the day, that's what really matters in it. That, you know, we change somebody's life for the better. We get somebody off the street. That we, is, we, we get somebody out of trouble. Mm -hmm. Somebody's kid who was uh, somebody's son, somebody's family member who was into the wrong. Yeah. And we got him out of there. Without doubt. Yeah. Without doubt. And yeah. I think I, I always say, and this is my motto, you know, if when I'm not here, they're going to say this old man was crazy. <laughs> yeah, you're not that old, by the way. <laughs> I'm not that <laughs> old. I'm sure you <laughs> called me elderly, but that's not the discussion off camera. But, uh, you know, this old man was crazy, but he did me right. And you know what? Uh, the, for me, that's a blessing. For me, that's a blessing. Allah you bless know, you, to, to answer to your question about engaging the youth, um, I, 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 I can talk, I can listen to them. I think one of the biggest things is, you know, having a listen, to, listening to the kids and, mm. and showing a bit of respect. What do you have to say? Uh, the, yeah. yeah. And, and one of the other biggest things over the years I've found is a little bit of praise goes a long way. Subhanallah. You know, Alhamdulillah, mm. you're, you're doing amazing, you know, you're brilliant. And that same child will be different, yeah. you know, with praise. So, yeah, I've been lucky. And the only the other thing is I'm, I, it keeps me young. Yeah. I, I spend most of my time with the youth, the kids. I have classes on a weekend. They start from six. Oh, mashallah. And these kids keep me young. So, so, but over the years, over the years, I'm not saying we helped everybody. Some people have slipped through the net. But, you know, the kids who have been there, some are police officers, some of them, they've gone into good work, oh, good families. So they've yeah. advanced quite well. Even right. where parents kind of, I'll, I'll talk to parents and they say, you know, Alhamdulillah, the gym was the best thing that happened. Oh, but it, it wasn't just the gym. Mm. You know, the whole yeah yeah we had we had uh, this is this is the rule this is you can't do that you can't do that you can't do that and so you've got everything in place a bit old school if yeah. you, uh, <laughs> they call us old school now but you know now you can't do that i'm sorry you can't and, and i think initially kids are like whoa this guy we don't like it but if they're stuck there you know yeah. you, i think i think we're losing a lot of boundaries Mm. No, so. no boundaries setting limits is important. Yeah, yeah. Then we'll we'll get somewhere in life in it. Otherwise, if there's no limit, no boundaries, everything just will be a chaos in it. Yeah, without um, doubt. Uh, uh, one thing uh, uh, that I was thinking is, uh, mashallah, uh, you mentioned that you listen to the youth a lot. Yeah. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Allah mentions in the Quran about the hypocrites is to make fun out of the Prophet of Allah by calling him Uzan. And this guy's an ear. Mm. He always listens to everyone. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, he's mm. listening to, you know, and he talk, uh, so the power, so that was a way where, you know, 
we should take time out, listen to people's problems, listen to people's uh, issues, youngsters, kids, uh, adults. I remember many years ago, uh, I was on to, I think, America for Taraweeh, Ramadan, quite a few years ago. Uh, one brother, he came to the masjid one day and he said, look, uh, I am the only one who fast in my house. Mm. My family, they quite far away. So, so basically, you say, I wake up, uh, you know, in the morning to do suhoor and then I do my own, my little um, uh, cereal or whatever I have. And then on my way to the masjid, I quickly pop into the petrol station, get a coffee and come out. So he said, the guy in the petrol station, a uh, few times, you know, he tried to do salam to me. So I'm just trying to see if he's a Muslim or not. Can you come with me? So he said, I've asked him once or twice, are you a Muslim? And he said, no. Mm-hmm. So what shall we do? So I said, let's just go, let's see. So we went there. Uh, I told him, I'll just sit in the car, you go and ask whether it's okay for us to go inside and talk to him. So he went inside, he said, yeah. So we were there, for good one hour, we just listened to him. Mm. You know, he had been through a lot in his life. Um, uh, you know, he had family issues, then how he came to America, he had come from somewhere else. And uh, he was just pouring his heart out. As, like he was doing his own work, he was packing yeah. up mm. things, and we were just like walking behind him, we were just like standing on the side, and he was just like telling us about different things in his mind and everything. And then, towards the end, you know, he, he was telling us, then we asked him that, are you a Muslim? Yeah. Because we didn't know if you were a Muslim. He said, yeah, I'm a Muslim. Mm. And uh, he said, today I feel good of being a Muslim that somebody has actually come to listen to me. True, yeah. He said, before, mm. uh, I've had a few people who came, they were just like telling me, do this, do this, do, do this, do this. He said, you never told me anything. Yeah. I said, look, I'm not here to tell you anything. I'm just here to meet you because you're Muslim. And uh, inshallah, you know, we have just come from, you know, I'm, I've come from UK to this masjid nearby. And inshallah, you can come at any time, visitors, meters, you know, if you need any help, we are here for you. That's all we have to mm-hmm. tell you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So sometimes you just need that, them to open up. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, you know, sometimes uh, if we just tell them, do, do, do this, do that, do, do this, do, do that, then I think like, but, Nobody is listening to me. Nobody is like, yeah, yeah. Like, what am I meant to do? Mm. That's in a lot of people, a lot of youngsters' mind. Yeah. yeah. So, for those parents who's got teenage kids from the age of 14, 15, all the way up to 20, mm. 23, mm-hmm. 24, they seem to be like in a bit of in a dilemma. Sometimes the kids are a bit going a bit off the rails, a bit out of control, they get into the trouble, they get into the wrong gangs etc what advice would you like to give these people you, you 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 know i think a lot of it starts at home yeah no definitely definitely and and when you got to 13 14 i think it's a little bit late okay. i think this work starts from a very young age what, what age do you think a very uh, as soon as as soon as <laughs> i mean obviously too yeah. young is very young but you know i think that one of the biggest things is as parents we got to give these children time if we think that we're going to, my parents, my kids are going to grow up and they're going to be this, and I'm not giving my kids time, mm. yeah, I think then we're going to struggle. Definitely. Because we yeah. get to a stage where, uh, Alhamdulillah, I was a bit lucky. Okay. I, was, I was very lucky in the sense that I was able to spend a lot of time with my kids. Oh, mashallah, mashallah. Yeah, I, it just happened like that. Yeah. And my kids were into sport and I was into sport. So uh, we, everything we did, we did together. Mashallah. And mashallah. they're like my friends. And I think we, 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 we lose that connection at a very young age. Mm. So, you know, kids are out there, they're doing their own thing. They, they, you know, we're running about, we're working, we're grafting. I know it's hard. We've got to work. But I don't think we're giving these children enough mm. time. Definitely. When they get, grow up, they've, they've already kind of developed. When they get to 13, 14, 15, and then I tell them to, you know, son, this is what you got to do. And it's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Where was you five years ago? I think yeah. it starts from home. Yeah, no, definitely. And, and a lot of the times we, as parents, we like to pass the responsibility on to, oh, look, he's got in a gang, he's doing this, he's doing that, he's so-and-so, school, mosque. No, no, uh, he, he starts here. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. And, and then we can build on, and that foundation has to be very, very solid. Mm-hmm. Am I saying everyone who lives that environment going to end up uh, straight and narrow? I don't think so. There's a lot of influence out there. Definitely. And... Uh, <coughs> 
And I really do believe, I, and, and I'm going to be, I'm a straight talker. People either like me or they don't, you know. I, the influence of the street is very, 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 very powerful. Mm. Peer pressure. Yeah. So I can be the, I can also be the best parent. But you know, when my kids are out there, uh, we were, I've been young. Yeah, you, yeah. you might not believe it, but I have done. <laughs> and there were a time where your friends and the street and the life out there is more attractive than anything anybody mm. else is going to say. Yeah, you feel very bored at home. and that, yeah. that, that's, You feel that's, that's everything. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And this is why I think you, you, uh, as per, you talk about respect. I think you talked about respect and, 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 and trust is another one. Mm. You know, your kids have to... So we, we, as parents, want respect from children. Sure. But what we have to do is we've got to give them respect. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, as a parent, you might think, I, my kid, I don't have to. No, you do. You have to trust and trust and respect your children. No, definitely. Like uh, Allah mentioned in the Quran about the dua of the pious people. رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْرَاجِنَا وَذَرِّيَاتِنَا خُرَّتْ آيُنْ وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِرِ إِمَامًا Famous dua. That the pious people, they make dua that, uh, oh Allah, Make our wives and our children the coolness of our eyes, mm -hmm. and make yeah. us make us the leaders of the muttaqin, the God fearing. Mm -hmm. They say, if you want your children to be God fearing, you need to be the leader. You need to show them how to be. Yeah. If you want your kids to be on a certain, you know, way in life, you need to be a step ahead of them. You mm. need to show them how to be like that. Mm. Like we have a lot of uh, you know kids coming to masjid, majusa. The parents are telling them, go to masjid, but the guy never comes to the masjid. Yeah, 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 true, true. He's telling me, have you read the Quran? Because not reading the Quran. Yeah, so yeah. when parents, they bring the children here, we tell them, look, oh, with all due respect to the, to the child, uh, I said, the parents, I think I need to work more on you. I said, we can do whatever effort we can do. You know, like Brother mentioned, you all yeah. start from home. We can do it one or two hours in the majlis, whatever we can do. Brother in the gym, they can do it for a few hours, whatever they in the gym. But at the end of the day, the rest of the time, you're always at home. Yeah. And the parents need to be a role model. Need to show them. If they want the parents, if they want the kids to go to Jannah, they need to show them the way to Jannah. Yeah, without doubt. Without definitely, doubt. Definitely. I have the same issue. Yeah. I'll get parents coming. I'll get dads and moms coming in. <sighs> now, this is my son. How are you doing? You okay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, can you make him something? Uh, well, right, okay. What do you want me to it's make like him? like a machine. Yeah. What it's do you want me to make him? Uh, you know, I want him to be boxer and I want him to achieve. And I say, yeah, yeah, you know what? I can do my best. But what are you going to do? Yeah. What's your role? Yeah. What's your role? Because the one thing I don't want is um, the, you enroll your child here and we don't see him. What happened? Oh, dad's busy. Dad, mom's busy. Mom, I'll do what I can here. Yeah, definitely. As a parent, you have to really get a grip of this and take responsibility. And and I, I'm not saying what, what, that is a big issue, but I think that is partly the issue too. Um, like I was just telling one of the parents the other day, they came to see me, they said, look, my our child is uh, 14, 15, I don't know exactly how old. He said, uh, he will not be listening to us, so we don't know what to do with him. I said, what do you mean? Mm. So we tell him to do things he doesn't seem to understand. So I said, look, now he's not a little baby. Now you just tell him do this and he'll do it. Yeah. He's a bit grown he's up now. A, he's yeah. a bit mature. Mm. So you need to treat him like that. So you need to tell him, oh my son, now mashallah you're growing. Now mashallah in the next one or two years you're going to have GCSEs and you're going to go to your college, university. Now, you know, you need to have a vision for your mm. life. Mm. You know, w w where do you see yourself in the next five years? Where do you see yourself in the next ten years? In terms of your career, in terms of your dean, where do you see yourself? Mm. I said, you set some limits for your children. Then talk like that. That look, oh my son, mashallah, you know, you are so much old. In the next five years, this is what I want to see for you from you in terms of your deen. This is my target for you in terms of your deen. Yeah, 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 yeah? yeah. Then the child knows, oh, this is what my parents want to see me. Mm. This is my target. And they are also ready to work with me. Then they'll build themselves. Yeah? Mm -hmm. If if the parents are lost, they don't know what to do. Yeah. The kids are even more lost. The, 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 the children will be lost. Yeah. Like you tell the parents, what do you want to do in life? They say, Nah, I don't want to do this. It's too hard. I don't want to do it. Like, mm. So what do you want to do? Well, yeah. yeah. Like, they're already going to college. They're already going, you know, they've already finished the GCSE in an level. They still have no clue of life. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? I, I feel, I feel, like I said, I just talk from my own experience. I mean, aside from the gym, I was a probation officer before. Yeah. yeah. So, mm. so 
I work with everybody. I work with murderers, you name it, from the top level to everybody, to the, the you know, the drug dealers, to everybody. I've, I've done that as a job. Um, and I think now, as parents, we, we're, I'm not using the word soft. I think our, our approach is different in that when a child says no, it's like parents are scared to kind of put down barriers and say, you know what, um, I think the kids are doing a lot of the yeah. telling and um, I think we lose that. And again, I think it comes back to being able to sit and communicate. I think communication is massive. Yeah. Can Please. I talk to, so me, can I talk to and communicate to my child? Mm. Does that make sense? <laughs> sure, sure. No, I know sure. telling him is one thing, but am I actually getting through? Uh, yeah. yeah. Am I communicating? Yeah. Is this child able to understand what I'm saying? And like, like for many people, uh, the father, for many kids, the father is just like an ATM machine. <laughs> like whenever he needs money, then he's talking to yeah, that. Yeah. He's like, they don't even talk to him anymore. They no, just message him. Yeah, message. Say, no man, no fun, your son. Mm. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> he's, he's sending it's a message. True. No money is <laughs> not funny. I think, I think. So he said, then the, then the father, he sends the message back. Too bad, too sad, your dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, no, it's true. And I, even now, you know, the, I mean, it's become even worse now, yeah. you know, with the phones and what have you. But I think uh, sitting down, talk to your kids whenever you can, give them that bit of contact, give them that bit of time, because when you lose them, it's too late. Yeah, I, I feel true. it's mm. it's a very, very uphill struggle, you know, when true, we true. lost them to the outside world. And when I say outside, I'm on about the, the, the things that are going on mm. out there. And, you know, I, I'm in a position where I know exactly what happens and how it works no, out definitely, there. Definitely. And, you know, it, the, as, as time is going by, I think it's getting worse. Like, uh, like I've been to prisons as well, mm, like uh, mm, as, as a guest. Chap it, yeah, chap yeah, chaplain, yeah. Imam, I've done Jummah in some prisons a few times. Uh, like, it's, the statistics are very sad. I don't know the exact statistics at the moment, but they were saying that in, as Muslims, we are only about 4 or 5% maximum in UK. Mm. Mm. But over nearly 30% are in prisons. Mm, yeah. Prisons. Mm. So like, so when we went to the prison, for example, I went to one of the prisons, there were about 100 Muslims there. Yeah? Mm. So they had about 5 rows or 6 rows of uh, people performing Salah. So you could tell the first row was people who ended up in some wrong cases. Okay, yeah. But they were told to claim you know to admit guilty for no reason yeah. whatever you know they, were, mm. they looked like sensible people yeah. yeah but the people behind them they were all grown-up adults people in the 30s 40s acting like animals mm. and i'm thinking like you know you know they're acting so wild and everything yeah but this is all non-muslim police officers on the side yeah you know, it's just an example we're trying to give yeah that mm. when juma is going on when salah is going on then this is so we've got a lot of work to do I think as parents, uh, the parents need uh, to understand that if we are correct, the next generation is correct. If mm -hmm. we are on, on track. Yeah. yeah. If we don't take things seriously, then we go, we're losing a whole generation. With that, no? and I, I yeah. don't think it's enough, uh, you know, I, I, I like to, I don't think it's enough just having kids. Yeah. You know, we think it's enough having kids. And the other big mistake we're making, we, we believe in the fact that money, money is everything. Yes. So I'll work all the hours in the day and all I do is give my child money. But you know what? No, 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 no. I think we're, we're attached to material. I don't want to get to... No, we have something more important than money to give. Yeah, of course we have. Yeah. I've got me, I've got my... Uh, I've got our time. time. Yeah, everything. Yeah. And that's the most yeah. thing that we can't give. Definitely. Oh, we're not Definitely. giving. You know, Definitely. Like uh, uh, in Ramadan when we were doing Tarawih, uh, mashallah, you know... Uh, we were going through the, I think it was the first day of Ramadan, and uh, we were going through the story of Ibrahim Ali Salam. Mm. Uh, that time, you know, as the verses were going on, there were certain things going through my mind. So I mentioned there as well after Tarawih to the people here in the masjid. I said, <coughs> Allah told Ibrahim Ali Salam to make the Kaaba. Mm. Yeah. You know, he said, Build my house. Mm. So Ibrahim Ali Salam, his son was there, maybe 10, 12 years old. Allah knows best. Ismail Ali Salam, exactly how old he was. So, or maybe after that. So he he didn't tell his son that, oh my son, you you go there, play 
stop disturbing me. I've got a job to do here. He said, no, you're going to join me with okay, him. Yeah. You're going to pass me the bricks. I'm going to put the bricks on. We're going to work together. Mm. Then he's making dua. Yeah. He started saying, I mean, mm-hmm. as they are building the Kaaba, Rabbana taqabbal minna in the Allah loved this action so much that when the time came to clean the house, you know, when the Allah said, both of you clean the house, my house, for those who come to do tawaf and who come to the taifin, wal aqifin, wa ruqai sujood. Yeah. So we need to, you know, um, uh, get them involved from a young age. Yeah, from a young age. Yeah. Get them involved in the masjid, get them involved in the majusa, get them involved. You know, everybody likes to say that, oh, the masjid is not doing this for us. The community is not doing this for us. The, we've got so many majusas. These people are not doing this for us. At the end of the day, we need to say, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing for the masjid? What am I doing for the majusa? Yeah. What am I doing for the community? Yeah. What am I doing for? Mashallah, like you said, you, you make an angry impact. If everybody thought that way, yeah. that I want to make an impact, you know, inshallah, first of all, in my life and then as many lives as I can, I want to you know, make a difference mm-hmm. yeah, in somebody's life. Take them out of the trouble, you know, give them some positivity in their life. Yeah, yeah. You know, get yeah. them on the track, you know, give them some productivity, you know, get them understanding, get them serious about their life. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it'll, it'll be a different one. Without doubt, I, yeah. the kids that come to my gym, I saw them kids more than the parents did. <laughs> it's, it's true. Yeah, true. Honestly, so many people like, I, I, these yeah. kids, I used to say to them, man, you spend more time in here than you do at home. And you spend more time, they call me uncle, uh, m- almost everybody. But I, I see you guys more in the gym than at home. So wh- wh- when do you spend time with, uh, with your parents? Well, we go to school, we, we have some to eat, go to mosque, come, come to the gym, spend time here, go home, eat, go to bed. Okay. When do you see parents? Okay. So who's... Yeah. who's, who's so many, many homes have become like hotels. Yeah. Everybody just coming in their own time, eating their own thing, sleeping in their own room. Absolutely. So Where's the influence? Like, yeah, where, and now we, we have these things. Sorry, I'm, you know, we have these things. Yeah. And, the, you know, I, I mean, this is another story on its own. Yeah. So the kids and people don't want to talk to you anymore on the yeah. phone and what have you. So I, 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 think, I think being a proactive... A proactive parent is a huge, huge thing. Mm. No, just like every day we should have a meal together. Yeah, P- put your phones away. Let's let's just enjoy a screen-free meal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's just okay. After we've had the meal, let's you know do a bit of Quran reading together, five ten minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's uh, do a little hadith talim together or something. You know, as a, as a family, you know, yeah, family yeah, yeah, bonding. Yeah. It's very very important. Uh, in that way, inshallah. Um, uh, uh, the the kids will understand that you know it's more about family. It's not just about screen. It's and more stuff. about family. Yeah, yeah. you gotta have trust in your family. You gotta have trust. I brought my kids up and I said, "Listen, whatever happens, I need you to talk to me yeah. out there. Whatever happens, whatever you do, I need you. But for them to talk to me, I need to, to be open. Definitely. You know, yeah, you I, need to have the the doors open. Yeah, you need to have all door open and not coming home and you know, kind of. As humans, we're, I'm going to say we're selfish as humans anyway. But you, you, you got to be thinking, hang on a minute, I wonder what's happened to today. I wonder what, give him that time to come and have a chat to you. And, and uh, we do, yeah. in the gym we do. Yeah. We see a child who, I know me and Adam and, you know, my other coaches, whoever, if we think the child is, we'll say, oh, are you doing? Come here, come here, sit down. Oh, you do everything you good. Going on, yeah. We won't make a big deal yeah. out of it. Are you doing? You're all right, good. And, and either they'll talk to us or we'll kind of pick things up. Yeah. Um, and, and that's all this child so needs. Yeah. They, they feel that somebody cares. Somebody, somebody wants to listen to me. Absolutely. Yeah, mashallah, yeah. Mashallah. May Allah reward you, mashallah. You're doing amazing work. And uh, inshallah, hope uh, we get more people like that who are ready to make an impact in people's lives. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm, uh, I think, um, I, I know you said, uh, you know, when I get going, I get going. But um, I also would like to put this out. And this is a very, 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 very key issue. I, I, in my other job, I did. Uh, I'm a domestic abuse expert, ah. and I know I'm taking it away. Yeah. But I'm gonna make a link 